This video is going to be all about understanding Google's search engine results page. Hey everyone, it's Alex with Lover Fighter Writer, and in this video we're going to learn a little bit more about what's actually happening when we do a Google search and the data that it presents when we search for different keywords. So let's get right into it. You can see here I'm at google.com and I've done a search for the keyword copywriting. And I just want to point out that what you're seeing here is uh, extra information that's being presented by a browser extension that I have installed called Keywords Everywhere. Um, and Keywords Everywhere is pretty cool because it gives you this uh, trending data and then it also gives you um, related keywords and other keywords that people also search for and some other long tail keywords and this is just the free version if you pay for keywords everywhere it'll also give you uh, search volume so that's not something that I promote that's just a tool that I'm aware of and I figured I would mention it because it's right here and uh, I don't want you to be distracted by that so uh, the ordinary Google results are everything that you see to the left of that. Okay, now the search engine results page is known in the SEO community as SERPs. So it's S-E-R-P, search engine results page. So if you ever hear someone referring to SERPs or a SERP, then they're talking about the search engine results page. And there's actually a lot going on here. So I'm going to try and break it down for you so that you understand all the different data that gets presented when you do a search on Google and hopefully that'll help you further your understanding and become a more adept search engine optimizer. And copywriting is of course uh, a very generic term, it's just one word, it's what we might call a head keyword uh, which means that it has tons of um, it has tons of volume, it has tons of potential results, and that's really because Google doesn't know exactly what we want when we search a term like copywriting. So you can see the first result that Google's given us is uh, just ordinary, an ordinary search result, and it is uh, Wikipedia, which is a pretty good response to a generic search like that because there's lots of information on Wikipedia about copywriting and links to other resources. So if we're just kind of looking to generally learn more about copywriting, that would be a good result. But right underneath that we have something different before we have more ordinary search results. And this is known as people also ask. And people also ask is uh, questions and other relevant search terms that Google notices people use when they search co things like copywriting. So basically Google has noticed that if someone searches copywriting they might also be likely to search what exactly does a copywriter do, how do I become a copywriter, what are copywriting examples, and what is good copywriting. And if I expand any of these I get an answer with a link to the website that the answer comes from and also when I expand them it adds more questions to the list. Now we have more, if I expand this one, we're gonna get a little bit more, and you can see the list is getting pretty long now. So if we expand one of these, and one of these, now it's, uh, it's many questions. So that's known as the people also ask section, and if you do a really good job of answering questions in your articles, then you can potentially get your data in there, and you would be the website that's linked and that's a pretty good way to get traffic from Google. So down here we have some more uh, ordinary search results and then beneath that we have images and if I click on an image it'll actually take me to an image search uh, for the same keyword that I used and the, uh, the main highlighted image is of course one that I clicked on. But we're not going to spend very much time on image searches. And then down here I just have more ordinary search results. And then I have Google suggesting some related searches. Because Google's whole, the whole purpose of the search engine is to give us what we're looking for as quickly as possible. And it doesn't really know what we're looking for right now because we just searched copywriting. It's such a generic term. 
So it's wondering, are you looking for copywriting jobs? Are you looking for examples of copywriting, copywriting salary, fundamentals of copywriting? Um, and if we were looking for any of these things, then we could just click on it and it would automatically search for that. So now let's go back up here. Instead of copywriting, let's search for what is copywriting? And you can see now the information has changed a little bit. For one thing, we've got what's called a knowledge panel over here on the side. And if this keywords everywhere data wasn't here, this would be at the very top. And it's got an image. And it's also got a excerpt from Wikipedia. Um, and these knowledge panels uh, typically come from Wikipedia. Uh, that's usually where the information is coming from. And then it's actually got some information down here that I can just expand, see some copywriting exercises, uh, some copywriting websites, and so on. And now because we've asked a specific question this time, Google has a better idea of what we're looking for. And so it's going to give us some more specific results. So we also have regular, regular search results. We also have people also ask like we had last time, but now we have a video carousel. And these videos are, uh, of course, YouTube videos that Google thinks might do a good job of answering our question. So we have what is copywriting? What is copywriting? How do you get into it? What is copywriting? The ABCs. And what does a copywriter do? And so Google is hoping that one of these videos will do a good job of answering our question. And most likely it would, if that's in fact what I was searching for. And then down here we have images and we have more Google suggested terms. Now let's change this again. Let's do copywriting Toronto. Now, Toronto is a big city near where I live. And by typing in the name of a service plus the name of a location, I have turned this into uh, potentially a local search. I'm basically telling Google that there's a good chance I'm looking for a local service. Because of that, um, we're going to see some significantly different data here. First of all, we now have ads. Um, you can see it says add, it says add, it says add. So these are not, these three are not ordinary search results. These are advertisements that people have paid to put here. And uh, if I were to click on it, then it would go to their website. So you can see uh, the first two are local service providers near Toronto or in Toronto who provide copywriting services. And then the third one is actually Upwork, even though it's not a local service business, it still wants to try and get your business if you're looking to hire a copywriter. So it's uh, going to run an ad for search terms like this. And if I were to search for different cities, I would probably see Upwork here a lot. So then the next one is an ordinary search result and it is uh, just a jobs website. So the main thing that Google's thinking here is that I probably want to find a copywriter, find someone to do some copywriting for me in or around Toronto. But just in case I'm looking for copywriting work in and around Toronto, it's given me this result as well. Then we have some people also ask, and we start to have uh, copywriting websites from Toronto. And then down here we have more ads and we have related searches. Now let's change this one more time and we're gonna change it to copywriting services Toronto. So now Google knows almost absolutely for certain that we're looking for a local service provider in and around Toronto who's going to help us with copywriting. So um, we still have the Upwork ad. Anyone can appear for basically any search term if they have the right keywords in their ad, they target the right keywords if they're with their ad, and they pay enough. So Upwork is still here. And then we also have some local content or copywriting agencies. And then down below that, we have something new. And this is uh, often called the map pack because we have a map of the Toronto area. And then we have 
uh, three listings. It's also sometimes called the three pack, but it's not always exactly three listings. Uh, I have seen it when it's only two or only one, and I think I might have seen it be four on a couple of occasions, but it is usually three most of the time. Um, although you might see three and then an ad because you can also run ads on the Google My Business listing. And that's what this is. This is uh, the listings for Google My Business. And if, uh, if you're not 100% sure what Google My Business is, maybe you've heard of it. Um, it is a free local business listing that Google provides that usually appears at the top of search results like this when you uh, do a local search. So because we searched Copywriting Services Toronto, Google knows 100% that, or close to 100%, maybe 98% that, um, that we're looking for a local business. So it's given us this, uh, this map pack, this Google My Business map pack, where we can easily find these businesses and see their ratings. So we might, you know, if we look at this, we might not want to go to this one. We might not want to go with this one because they have bad or bad review and no reviews. Uh, this one looks very tempting though because it has a five star review and we can just click right here to go to their website or click right here to get directions. So uh, Google My Business actually gets a lot of traffic from local search. And if, if you have someone who provides a local business that uh, gets a lot of search volume for their services, then having a Google My Business listing that ranks like this is going to be very important. So below that we just have regular search results and these are uh, people who are copywriters or content writers in and around Toronto and their websites are well optimized for search so they're ranking on page one. And then below that we have some more ads and of course the related searches. So that is pretty much the anatomy of the Google search results page. Uh, I hope that that improves your understanding of Google search engine results pages. And I hope that you can take some of this knowledge and uh, put it to use in your work, um, whether it's just helping you understand things a little bit better or whether it's helping you build uh, a new skill set revolving around SEO. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.